Namaskar. Welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. And today is the lecture 5, the last lecture of module 7, where we look into some more contemporary theories in motivation. So, we have looked into what motivation is specifically in the initial few lectures of the module. We have seen intrinsic as, as well as extrinsic motivation. We have also looked into motivation in detail in terms of some of the earlier theories, how intrinsic motivation happens, how extrinsic motivation happens. We have also looked into some of the contemporary theories in the previous lecture, including the self-determination theory and even the self-efficacy theory. So, today we will look into a couple of more theories as part of uh, this lecture. I am Dr. Abraham Salisak. I am the assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So, today's theme would be, will extra effort lead to a better performance? That is a question one, question number one and a sub question to that always. So, will extra effort lead to a better performance always? That is a question we will try to answer today. Let us look into the first and the foremost theory, equity theory. Equity as, as the word suggests, it is more functional. Equity is somewhere there is a balance. Somewhere there is a balance between the input, somewhere there is a balance between the input and the output. So, how much effort you are giving to a particular task, how much effort you are giving to a particular organizational requirement, some activity, are you getting something equal in return? This is what equity theory talks about in broad. The theory argues that a major input into job performance and satisfaction is the degree, degree of equity or it could be also inequity that people perceive in their particular work situation. So, it is more or less clear that it is not only equity but also inequity that people perceive in their work situation. So, it might be the situation that you might feel that there is a lack of equity or there is inequity, but it is specific to your perception. It is not that say uh, there might be a co-worker, there might be a, a, a employee who is a colleague who is working with you, he or she might have a different opinion. The effort you are putting in might be less, that is what you are, that is why you are not getting the results, that might be the comment that he or she might be making. But as a person you are perceiving that I am giving my 100 percent, I am giving the best I can, still I am not able to get the required or the desired output, this is where inequity comes in. So, the equity theory basically looks into the perception in the particular work situation. Employees perceive what they get from a particular job situation in relationship to what they put into it and then they compare their outcome or the input outcome to input ratio with that of the relevant others. When I am talking about the relevant others, it could be your team members, it could be the same people who are in same position within the organization. You are a manager in let us say in, in particular department ABC. You might be comparing yourself with another person in department XYC, the same position manager. So, whether you are putting in the same effort and he or she is putting in the same effort and are you reaping the same benefits, are you getting the same output, this might be the comparison that you are making and this is what equity theory is all about. When we see the ratio as in or unequal, when we see the ratio as unequal and we feel under rewarded, we are not getting what we are actually giving to the particular organization. Many a time, it is it is clear that many a time we would have observed this, we would have felt this, we would have, uh, you know, it, it might hurt you even to think of those situations where you have put the full effort for that organization or for that particular activity within your organization, but still you are not rewarded. We see experience equity tension that creates anger, that creates frustration. When we see ourselves to be over rewarded, let us take the other uh, end of the continuum. There could be a situation where you are under rewarded, you are, you are tense, the tension leads to frustration, anger, uh, sort of uh, disturbed uh, situation, mindset. All these situations are there. Let us look into the other end of the continuum where you are over rewarded. You are getting more than what you are actually putting in for. We are, you, are, you are being uh, rewarded handsomely for something which you have not done. It creates a certain level of uh, emotion of guilt. So, this, these are the two situations which equity theory talks about. If you particularly see this, there could be some inputs, job inputs like the hours worked, like the education. 
the qualification you are the best educator best qualified person in the room you are uh, let's say contrastingly much better than others in the particular group or in the team you could have a much a much superior work expo uh, you know work exposure your work experience or your your performance might be uh, tactically or interestingly very high so all these aspects might contribute to your job inputs this is again your perception in return what are the different perks you are getting in terms of the salary in terms of the promotions in terms of the career progression that's happening in terms of the bonus or the recognition that is happening so is this input equal to output this particular ratio one is to one is it coming up out like that is the ratio coming out like one or is it rewarding in a positive way then equity theory stands equity theory talks about inequity also where you think that you are giving a lot to the organization but you are not getting something that is equally good in return let's look into some of the reference comparisons in equity theory the first one is self insight self insight talks about a situation where you are comparing with yourself within the particular position within the particular employment self outside is you being in organization a and you being in organization b let's understand a situation where you are working in a particular organization a from uh, let's say 2015 to 2020 now you have shifted from uh, a to b from 2020 onwards you are working there so this is this is a self outside where you are comparing yourself in the same picture in some other organizations so that is self outside the third reference would be other inside others inside there are some individuals who are there within your group they are in the same same employment same status quo same position how others are being treated in terms of equity and others outside how they are performing in a different organization so these are the four typical reference comparisons in equity theory and these four terminals will give you a understanding of where you stand in terms of your input and in terms of your perceived output and what is the equity theory talking about equity as an explanation of work motivation is something that equity theory is successful in giving out if the person's perceived ratio perceived ratio of input and output which we are talking about in detail is not equal to others within the organization he or she will strive to restore the ratio to equity so many a time you you feel that you go to your boss you say that i am doing this much work but i am not rewarded that much sometimes you tend to raise a red flag when somebody else is not working sometimes you tend to raise a, uh, a particular concern or query to the manager that how much is the working uh, let's say load or working hours or something like that so there equity comes in there is an attempt of yours to bring in to restore equity to restore equity the person may even alter the inputs or the outcome so it's a ratio specifically there is a numerator and a denominator one is input and another is output so you have to restore the ratio the ratio the ratio has been somehow disturbed so x is to y you can either tamper with x or you can tamper with y one important aspect is you can always compare with others the input they are giving is very less you can take up the situation to the higher authorities there could be other situation where you are trying to see x and y closer you are trying to see that there is no need actually for me to put this much of effort when others are not putting up this much of effort so you tend to manipulate your input you are otherwise very motivated very oriented very successful result oriented in the job but somehow you see that the people around you are not performing in a better way you tend to try to manipulate that particular rex that is a possibility there is other possibility that you tend to manipulate the other uh, outcome why you don't want to have a higher outcome or you try to augment your outcome so many a time uh, there are a lot of things which you do in organization which is not recorded which does not go documented which is not documented and because it is not documented it does not come to your credit so you start recording each and everything that you do in the organization sometimes you have seen this this is the the classical way of restoring or an attempt 
to restore the equity. So it's important to note that inequity does not come about only when the person feels cheated. It could be a context based. It could be that you, there are a lot of people, you know, I would like to take the example of disguised unemployment, etc. Where there are a lot of people that are there there might not be the need of equal contribution there might be class classically there might be situations where you are where somebody else is not working as as equal to you but there might be situations when there are uh, functional areas which are different there might not be actual requirement of that much work from that particular functional department there could be possibility like that so it is always not person specific it could be at times the organization or the context specific as well now let's come into another important aspect or another important theory which is victor room's expectancy theory expectancy theory also known as the vie theory valence instrumentality expectancy theory is a psychological theory of motivation proposed by Vroom, Victor Vroom in 1964. So expectancy theory is based on three specific key components. One is expectancy, another is instrumentality and the third is balance. Expectancy is what the functional board talks about the expectancy. Instrumentality is the, the ability to achieve that particular target and the balance is something the value you give to that particular reward that you have obtained. So according to expectancy theory an individual's motivation to engage in a particular behavior or task is determined by the particular formula so motivation is essentially acting as a function of expectancy e i is instrumentality and v is valence so these are the three aspects or three elements which actually determine the motivation so expectancy theory argues that the strength of our tendency to act a certain way depends on the strength of our expectation of a given outcome and its attractiveness you can always look into this as a formula so motivation is clearly dependent on the expectancy on the instrumentality on the valence let me make it very uh, clear in terms of simple plain language you have an expectancy towards a particular task let's say your expectations are high you want to get this this is what you expect this is what you always wanted you are always motivated because of that there is a possibility that you have the required skill set you can achieve that there is a certain instrumentality associated with that you are always motivated and finally the consequence the result the reward is equally uh, motivating for you you are valuing that reward it's not very trivial for you you have worked hard for the reward you have got the reward after tremendous hard work that has happened behind the scenes you value the consequence you value the result so motivation is essentially a function of the expectancy the instrumentality and the valence so let's look into the expectancy theory on basis of a model of motivation so the first one is the effort and you're looking into the effort the perceived effort would be effort performance probability if i work hard will i get the job done so this is the first effort question that would drive you to perform and come then comes the performance when you're looking into the performance what rewards will i get when the job is well done so basically there is a perceived performance reward probability that you are guessing in the second level and finally when it comes to the reward perceived value of reward what rewards do i value there could be some situations where where you are because of a successful completion of task you are being given a bonus but there are situations where you are given a bonus as well as a raise in a position you are being promoted from a manager to a senior manager now this is interesting because the reward you value here was not monetary you never expected or you never started doing the whole task by expecting money in return what you wanted was specifically career progression a recognition within the organization and if that is coming that is what you value more and that is the reward that is the balance that is associated with the whole process now let's look into this wonderful case before we conclude 
bullying bosses now i'm pretty sure that every single organization be it yours be it your friends be it your near and dear ones everyone would have faced bullying bosses after a long weekend kara stared at her computer with a sick feeling in her stomach her boss had added her as a friend on facebook kara did not feel particularly close to her boss nor did she like the idea of mixing her social life with her work still it was her boss Kara reluctantly accepted her boss as a Facebook friend little did she know her troubles were only beginning Kara's boss soon began using her online information to manipulate her work life it began with inappropriate innuendos regarding Facebook photos eventually Kara's boss manipulated her work hours confronted her both on and off Facebook and repeatedly called Kara's cell phone questioning her whereabouts my boss was a gossiping domineering contriving megalomaniac and her behavior dramatically intensified when she used facebook to pry kara said eventually kara was forced to quit i feel like i got my freedom back and can breathe again she said although many individuals recall bullies from elementary school days some are realizing bullies can exist even in the workplace too so in a recent poll 37% of employees report being victims of a bullying boss and these bullies don't pick on just the weakest in the group any subordinate may fall prey so skara found bullying is not limited to male bosses 40% of bullies are women and women are their targets 70% of the time now this is an interesting case which i would i wanted to bring to your limelight because there are gender variations associated with this if you look into situations of bullying you will see that it is not the case that always the weakest are the victims there are situations where the intention of the boss is to bully there are situations where it is not gender specific there are situations where uh, women bosses are bullying and the target 70% as the case talks are uh, women victims so there are situations like this so all these situations you would want to work in the organization only if you are motivated throughout the module we have looked into what motivation is what extrinsic motivation is what intrinsic motivation is we have looked into different theories like the valence theory the vroom's expectancy theory so expectancy instrumentality and valence these are the three important aspects when you are looking into expectancy the expectation you have with respect to the particular task the the ability or the inherent understanding that you can achieve the task that's the instrumentality and whether you actually value the particular reward that is the particular uh, valence theory that vroom has given and also if you look into equity equity is more of perception how much input you are given to the particular organization are you getting a similar output so this is what makes you keep motivated within the particular organizational setup always think that you are an individual who are there to perform you cannot run away from the work but having said that when you are performing it is your right to look into the equity that you are getting within the organization if somebody is is putting in less effort and gaining in more rewards gaining in more benefits there is no harm in pointing it out to your boss there is no harm in actually escalating your concern to the uh, representatives or to the authorities through the proper channel there is no harm in doing this but that said it could it should not be that you are deliberately trying to manipulate your inputs because your organization does not need that much or does not value that much your organization might need but does not value that much it's always looked down if you try to deliberately manipulate bosses come and go but you as an organize you as an employee of the organization has to stand still you have to be the center pillar you have to be the life force power in the in the particular organization so that determines how motivated you are that your motivation will determine how much effective you are and your effectiveness within the organization will determine how much effective the organization is Thank you for listening to me patiently. See you in the next class with another module. Till then, take care. Goodbye.